Hey guys, what's going on? Thank you so much for watching, and if you're new to the channel, my name is Savannah, and today we are jumping into another Planet Zoo speed build. And for those of you that recognize this project, you'll know that we're back in Mayberry Park Zoo, and boy oh boy does it feel good to be back in Mayberry Park. So many of you guys have asked when Mayberry Park will be returning, when I would be building something else in this project, and uh, the answer is now. Here you go. This is when we're jumping back into Mayberry Park. Unfortunately, I lost a little bit of inspiration for this project in the past months. I started this project wanting to be hyper detailed, hyper realistic, and it really kind of just deterred me from the project a little bit. So in this build, we're kind of going back to natural, normal Savannah style, I guess, if you want to call it that, where we take realism into account a little bit, but it's more got hints here and there and really just kind of building what I think looks pretty because as you guys will know I like to build pretty things and really kind of trying to go overboard and think about all the teeny tiny details and get really hyper realistic with things it can be fun for me every once in a while but honestly it does add a little bit of frustration when I feel like I can't do it when I'm not executing something properly and it really just kind of diminishes my creative juices if you want to describe it that way so with this habitat, again, we're taking into account hints of realism here and there, like you'll see at the very end or towards the end of the, the build, I'll put some implied, actually they're not implied, they're there, I'll put some hot wire across the top of the rocks to simulate the fact that the macaques would not be able to jump out. And did I even mention that? We're like two minutes into the video and I don't even think I told you what we're building for. Although, if you've seen the thumbnail, you know exactly what we're building for. We're building for the Japanese macaques and we're actually in in the kind of Japanese friendship garden area that we started with the red crowned cranes during the wetlands animal pack that came out a couple months ago. So this is just opposite of that over on the other side and it kind of completes this little itty bitty section. Um, potential to continue it, yes. There is a little bit off the back building where the red crowned cranes are that I could continue a guest path and do something like maybe red pandas or giant pandas or some sort of other Asian animal, but for now I have no immediate plans. I actually have plans for something else, something that I've really wanted to build recently. So I, as of now, am kind of capping off this Asian area habitat. Which I actually, you know, if we end up being uh, done with it here and leaving it here, I'm actually kind of okay with that because I'm really happy with how this kind of little small quaint little area kind of turned out. It could probably use a couple more details specifically in the guest facing areas uh, because I don't like building for the guests. I don't spend a lot of time detailing out those areas. Um, but yeah, overall I am, I am pretty happy with it. So let me know what you guys think as always. Of course, I love to hear your guys's feedback in the comment section below so let me know if you're really dying for a specific animal to be added who knows maybe I'll change my mind uh, but getting into the build a little bit here going off of some reference pictures of just some uh, very traditional kind of Chinese, Japanese, Asian inspired architecture, building a little bit of just kind of a scenery object, to be honest, because they don't actually use this. The, the monkeys will not be climbing it. They don't go inside of it or anything like that. It's just meant to be theming for the habitat. And it's just a little building here using a lot of the temple pieces, the plaster, of course, because the plaster is basically my favorite game. Uh, favorite piece in the entire game and then some of the Asian roof pieces and things. I really wanted to make this an open habitat in that when you're at the guest areas on the paths looking into the habitat you're not going to be looking through any sort of fencing. So I really utilized kind of a water moat as well as some elevation to make it look like the monkeys would not be able to escape. And that way, when you're looking as a guest, you're not going to have to be looking through any sort of fences. It feels much more open and you feel like as a guest, you're much more kind of immersed in the habitat, I guess. Like, like they're just, they're right there. They're super close and it's an unobstructed view of the animals. 
I really had fun with climbing frames in this one. So you'll see as soon as we're kind of done with this building and we kind of get the overall layout of the habitat going, I do go in and put some climbing structures all around. After building the Amur Leopard habitat and doing that kind of climbing structure, I was kind of re-inspired to do more animal detail-y things in habitats. Um, and so I wanted to do lots of climbing for these guys because they are monkeys. So they're going to spend time, you know, climbing and exploring their habitat a lot more than some other uh, more ground dwelling animals. But anyway, we use a lot of the climbing pieces to kind of make little paths here and there for the monkeys to kind of explore. Now in game, they really don't honestly use them too much, which is pretty typical of the animals, you know, they don't necessarily use the climbing structures a whole lot unless they're really kind of 90 degree angles and on kind of a grid system, you know, kind of set up in a particular way, but it still ends up looking nice. My favorite part is this little platform that you'll see when we get to it. It's going to stick out over the moat a little bit. And my idea was that, you know, in a zoo, the keepers could put some sort of enrichment up there to entice the monkeys to hang out up on that platform, or they could just sit out there in the sun or hang out or whatever it is and they would be really really close to the guests again with this really awesome unobstructed view you can see that little house thing building thing whatever you want to call it is completed now it's not uber detailed i feel like the roof pieces themselves have a lot of detail in them um but it's enough detail that you get the idea you get the style without being so overly intricate and i kind of wanted to meet that happy medium in the middle because i didn't want it to look like you know this zoo spent a million dollars on this little house but i also didn't want it to look like a little shack that they kind of threw some paint on to make it feel like it was themed if you know what I mean so kind of like some implied theming and just some touches that help you get the point help you kind of understand the style but not way over the top you know we're not talking uh, Disney Park theming here we're just talking you know subtle theming overall I mean all the theming in this little section would be kind of what I consider kind of over the top for a zoo anyway I guess well you know maybe it, it depends on what zoo you're talking about. But moving on here, we're going to do the kind of back fencing on the back of the habitat. And so I'm stealing some fencing that I already created, but then putting a plaster wall at the bottom because of course I don't want anything made out of wood, anything that's going to kind of deteriorate that the monkeys would be able to climb or anything like that really wouldn't be good as a backdrop of the habitat as like an actual perimeter fence because we of course want it to be secure, but then using some of those like Asian inspired pieces as a little bit of detailing to kind of keep that theme going. The fence is relatively simple, but I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. Deciding how I was going to fully enclose the habitat was actually one of the hardest things for me in this habitat. And that's something that I struggle with whenever I do like an elevated or a sloped habitat like this, because I kind of am only thinking about the habitat as one little thing that we're putting down, like this little section, right, that we're building. And obviously it's going way up on a hill and back behind it, we're either going to have to have like a huge retaining wall or that's part of the zoo that it just goes up in elevation and we can continue off from there. But how I'm going to incorporate it with the rest of the zoo is not really something that I've thought about yet. So deciding how to kind of cap it off was a bit of a struggle. And I do leave the outside of what you can't see in the habitat completely blank for that reason, just to make it so that I can kind of incorporate it with whatever's going to go back behind there um, best with whenever I decide what it's going to be. But here you can see I've put in the rock walls on the one side and now I'm trying to figure out how to keep the monkeys in because obviously if I keep them like that, the monkeys would theoretically just be able to hop right out. So I end up raising it up a little bit and then using some of the pieces that we got with the Europe pack, which is phenomenal, uh, not this chain link fence, some of like the ceiling fan beams or whatever they're called and some of the brackets and doing a custom little hot wire. I love that we got these really itty bitty um, circular beams or rods, whatever you want to call them, because I think they're perfect for little details like this. And so I'll just do the hot wire. And then once I've done it once, there's no reason to do it again. So I just take the whole wall, flip it over and put it on the other side. And that way both the right and the left sides are completely secured uh, and the monkeys can't get out. 
Now, of course, in reality, this is a sandbox uh, mode build, so I do have escapes turned off. So if this were not in sandbox, I can't honestly tell you if they would or wouldn't escape. Um, but I don't like to play with the needs of the animals. I like to build pretty things, and so I'm going to build in sandbox and make it so they can't escape. And that way, whatever I build is going to work. So there you go. <laughs> but overall, this build actually only took me a couple hours. I have really struggled to find time to build in Planet Zoo recently. So it felt really nice for me to get a good chunk of time and put this together and get another speed build out for you. I have had many, many stressors in life as of recently. And without going too far into it or getting a little negative, because I like to try to keep things positive here on the channel, um, I've struggled a little bit with stressors and um, some anxiety and some depression and I've really just kind of been trying to get through that and uh, and building in Planet Zoo is one of those things that really kind of helps me relax and you know enjoy but I just honestly haven't had the time for it recently so I do apologize for a little bit of absence of videos I guess is what I'm really trying to say that I really haven't lost inspiration I haven't lost motivation I'm just struggling for time because I have some other things in my life that are kind of taking priority right now um, and of course you know those of you that know that kind of suffer with uh, anxiety and depression some days you just you're just not feeling it and you just kind of have to space out or um, you know do little things like go on a walk or watch a movie or whatever it is that you do to kind of relax and cope with those things um, and uh, that's just what I've been doing but I'm very excited to get back into it like I said and get this video out for you guys we will be streaming tomorrow so for those of you that haven't been able to catch a stream yet we do stream every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. As of right now, my schedule may change in the future, but as of right now, it is every Thursday, and we'll be continuing our Stream Zoo project, which I am honestly having a blast with. I had a horrible day uh, on Tuesday, and to be quite honest with you, all I could think about was, can it just please be Thursday because I want to stream, I want to hang out with you guys, and I want to play some video games, and that was all I wanted to do. Um, in fact, so much so that I almost did a surprise stream on Tuesday evening, uh, but I didn't have the time. So anyway, long story short, I'm really excited to stream. I'm really excited to hang out with you guys, and I hope you guys will be able to be there and hang out with me and uh, enjoy some video games together. But we are just about finished with this habitat. Um, we are doing some little climbing frames, like I mentioned before, adding some little ropes here and there, not necessarily for the monkeys to climb on, but just something for them to hold on to, explore, like I said, places for the keepers to hide enrichment, whether that be food enrichment, Enrichment or toy enrichment stuff for them to kind of explore and go through in their habitat so that they can get some some little stimulation in their life and they're not just in a boring uh, little pit so I'm very happy with how it turned out oh yeah I totally forgot I added a little yeah, very implied very very implied little backstage area here and to be quite honest this is probably way too small of a building to be a backstage area for any type of animal but I needed a backdrop, it needed to look like there was somewhere that the keepers were coming from, and I wasn't really feeling doing a backstage build at this point, so I kind of just threw this building here in the same style as the other building, just to keep it kind of cohesive and make it look like it all meshes together, like it's all one. And then we move on to a couple little details in the guest area, making a little fence here just with some bamboo pieces um, to add a little bit of interest and uh, something to look at, some different textures and colors and stuff so that it can be something a little bit different. And then I go through, I really loved the... Is it like the fountain bamboo? I think it's called. It's not the big bamboo piece, but the littler ones. Uh, really go through and kind of add that everywhere as kind of ground coverage and a little bit of greenery. That's basically my favorite plant in this build. I kind of throw it everywhere. So we go through and do that, and then it's pretty much done. The very last thing that I'm going to add, and I'm going to talk about it before it actually pops up on screen here. Oh, actually, just kidding. Here we go. These signs are phenomenal, and they're by Lobry. I think is how you say it, L-O-B-R-Y. They posted these in my Discord, and for those of you that are interested in downloading them or seeing some other wonderful blueprints put down by some wonderful creators, we have an entire channel on our Discord uh, dedicated to that. So that's where I found these. They are so well done. They're so simple, but so 
realistic and zoo feeling at the same time. I absolutely love them. Um, so highly recommend and I think they fit perfectly in this habitat. I was looking for something that wasn't overly themed but very um, very zoo feeling. I don't really know how else to describe that uh, but they're perfect. So thank you so much to Lobri. I, I think that's how you say it. Lobri or Lobri. Um, thank you so much for posting those in the discord and allowing me to use them. I will uh, I'm going to continue to use them in basically everything. <laughs> but here we go. We are on to the glamour shots. Some b-roll if you will. Um, so some cinematics really. Uh, overviewing the uh, habitat. I lost my train of thought there for a moment. Overviewing the habitat here you can see the finished product. All the little monkeys running around and enjoying their habitat. A little bummed I couldn't get them to use the kind of hot water spigot or the little fountain, the water fountain spigot thing. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I so appreciate your support. If you made it this far, you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below, comment any questions, feedback, or anything you want me to know. And until next time, I will talk at you in the next video. Bye!